I'm Hugo, welcome back to my YouTube channel and today we're going to be making savoury rhubarb curry. Now I know what you might be thinking, rhubarb in curry? What the hell is going on there? But let me tell you something that most people don't really know. Rhubarb is not just for desserts. It works great in savory dishes as well. Um, I like to think of rhubarb in my savory dishes like I use ginger. So a stick of rhubarb, probably about this size, which is I think around 30 grams worth, is probably equivalent to a, a, a just a thumb of ginger that you would normally use in Asian or Indian cooking. Um, so just look at it that way and you'll open up a whole avenue of these amazing savory rhubarb dishes. And if you don't believe me, just check out the recipe today, try it out for yourself and see what you think. It is really great. It's tangy, tasty, it's heat from the chili paste and chili powder, sorry. It's really, really awesome, quick curry recipe uh, that I think you guys are gonna love. So let's jump into the recipe. All right rhubarb curry. So the first thing we want to do is prep our rhubarb. So I have about 250 grams worth of rhubarb here um, and we're going to finely slice this. I'll just show you how finely we're going to slice it um, and then I will fast forward so you don't have to watch me chop the whole lot. But we basically want to do it as thinly as possible. So you're looking at slices I don't know if you can see that, but pretty, almost like I think um, a quarter of a centimeter uh, thin. So don't worry if you can't slice, you know, super, super thin. We don't want to shave it, but you want to get it as thin as possible. And the reason for this is because we kind of want the rhubarb to melt into the sauce. I don't, I'm not looking for textured rhubarb pieces because that gives a bit too much tang, a bit too much, um, rhubarb craziness to the curry we kind of want this rhubarb to melt into the sauce so if you also have uh, I've got some quite thin sticks of rhubarb here but if you get big chunky boys like they sometimes have in the supermarket or the grocers just be sure to halve those before you slice them up so that you again don't get any big pieces we're looking for small thin slices okay let me prep this now right Rhubarb, uh, nicely prepped, evenly chopped, evenly sliced. So now I'm just going to finely dice uh, two large onions and four uh, cloves of garlic. And this wants to be very finely diced because again, we want this, these, um, these vegetables to melt into the sauce and that's gonna give more thickness and flavor to the sauce. You don't want big pieces of onion that you're just gonna bite through, etc. We want that to, these vegetables to almost thicken that sauce. So it's provide, there's no coconut milk in this recipe. And we're looking at the veggies to re replace that and make it really thick, rich curry sauce. Okay, onion, garlic, and rhubarb chopped. Now that's all the prep we need to do for um, the curry. Uh, so let's get cooking. Okay, so to cook the curry, we're going to heat a tablespoon of vegetable oil into a large saucepan. This is a saute pan, but a saucepan will work absolutely fine. Um, get it over a medium to high heat. And then we're gonna to toss in um, the garlic, sorry, the onion, and the garlic. You just want to fry this for about three to four minutes until you start to get some color onto the onions and they've softened. Ooh, those onions are strong. Okay, it's been about three or so minutes and uh, we've got some coloring on these onions. They're starting to soften up. And that's when I'm just gonna add in our sliced rhubarb. And again, just mixing it into that onion and garlic mixture. And fry it for about another minute or so. Okay, I can see that rhubarb is starting to soften. It's been about six, uh, 30 seconds or so. And now I'm gonna add in the spices that we want for the curry. So I've got two teaspoons of caster sugar, 
I've got half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You can use just regular uh, chili powder, whatever you have in the cupboard. And if you don't like uh, curries too spicy, just omit that. You don't need to add it in. And then I've got two tablespoons of garam masala and two teaspoons of cinnamon. And just mix that together with the veggies and the rhubarb. I always do these before lunch and it's great and everything, but I'm absolutely starving while making these recipes. Not a good idea. Okay, so mix that in nicely. You can see there that that is all evenly combined in with the rhubarb, the onions, and I'm just gonna pour in uh, 300 grams of red split lentils. You can use other lentils here, but I find that uh, red split lentils work the best. They give the, the nicest flavor. Um, if you're using whole lentils, just be sure to add on a little extra cooking time because the split lentils will cook through a lot quicker. Cool, just stir this through and then pour over our vegetable stock. I've got 500 ml of vegetable stock here. And just stir that throughout the lentils and the rhubarb. And once that's evenly stirred, we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. Right, that's nicely simmering away now. So um, what we're gonna do is just cover this and cook and reduce the heat and cook it for 13 to 15 minutes until the lentils are cooked and that sauce has really reduced down and it's really nice and thick. Um, so just leave that to cook. Super fun fact for you guys while the rhubarb is cooking. Did you know that UK has a really great history or long history with rhubarb and at one point in time, the rhubarb triangle, which is a um, area in Yorkshire, um, produced 90% of the world's rhubarb. So we're pretty hot on our rhubarb in uh, the UK. Anyway, fun fact for you there. Okay, so it's been um, 13 minutes, I think, um, and this curry and the lentils are nicely cooked down. You can see there that we've got really soft lentils, but you also want a little bit of bite with them. You don't want them to be completely mush. So um, if you're getting a little bit of al dente from those lentils, that is. Um, and you can also see, I don't know if you can see actually, but um, the rhubarb has really kind of melted into the sauce and that's what you really want. Um, so looking good. So the final thing we're gonna do for uh, this curry sauce is we're gonna add in some greens into the mix. So I've got 150 grams of uh, spinach and about 30 to 40 grams of fresh chopped coriander. So I'm just going to turn off the pan. I've turned off the pan. I'm just going to chuck both of these greens in. And we're just <coughs> literally, <coughs> sorry, put something stuck in my throat. Um, we're literally just going to stir this spinach and coriander into the hot curry until it just wilts down nice, nicely. Um, and again, you don't need to have the pan heat on to do this. Uh, it's actually much easier just to take it off the heat. Okay, after about a minute of just stirring that spinach in, you can see it's nicely wilted down into the sauce. It's gonna provide a really nice irony um, note to the tangy and uh, kind of sweet rhubarb curry. So. I'm just gonna season this with a little bit of kosher salt, just for good measure. And I might hit it with just a little bit more water, just to loosen it up, because those lentils have absorbed quite a lot of water. And that's it. Rhubarb, savory rhubarb curry done. Okay guys, there you have it, savory rhubarb curry. I hope you guys have enjoyed this recipe and are inspired to use 
Rhubarb in more savory dishes. As I said at the start, it works great. It's awesome, it's versatile. And rhubarb right now is in season, it's around, it's in your grocers. So go out and buy it and use as plenty of it, as much of it as you can. Um, you know, you can do like a savory rhubarb dish and then also have your sweet rhubarb dessert afterwards to go crazy and full on nuts for the rhubarb. Maybe that's a bit too much. Um, anyway, I, if you have enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more weekly recipe videos. I'm trying to be a bit better at putting these out weekly now, so please subscribe for more content. And um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. I will be get sure to get back to you ASAP. As always, the full recipe description or full recipe link is in the description below. Click that, check it out. It's got some more tips and tricks in there. Um, but that's all from me um, and I will see you soon.